hold on, let me turn these on. There we go. The necklace is back, but this video is not about the necklace. This video is about DaVinci Resolve 19.6 or the public beta. I think, I don't know, actually, I'm not sure if it is 19.6. I think it's just called 19 public beta. But anyways, let me just touch upon a couple of things that I saw that are new. And to be honest, I, this is the first time I opened DaVinci Resolve 19 because I didn't have a chance to try it out earlier because I was working on a bunch of like the assets, the paper full effects and all that stuff. So that was getting a little bit of like, I didn't want to try it out on 19 because you can really go back and make it work in 18 sometimes. So yeah, so that's why I'm still working on 18 on those type of things. And for now, I have both versions installed on my computer. Now, a couple of new damage resolve things that I found are, first of all, on I think they came out on this version and not on earlier betas, which are a couple of generators that you can use, which are called Stinger Transitions. What is that for? Well, I think the main thing is for like, I think these would work great if you have like a gaming channel or something like that. Uh, these are all motion graphics transitions, basically, that I think the stuff or these type of use case would be more like entertainment videos, right? Um, these could work on some like educational videos. Um, this one, let me just make this smaller a little bit. This one, for example, is really more like something like you would see in the news maybe or but but it's more like gaming style i would say too right and then you would just for if you wanted to use these you just drag and drop these as a generator and here you would just drag and drop whatever your logo is right if you don't want this to be a logo you can just use your name right here what is going on there it goes and then you press play and transition from one clip to the next using this generator it works great they're not the styling of these are more for those type of videos in my opinion but they could work on anything you can make things work on pretty much anything right uh this one is really cool this one i like this one a lot it's pretty clean i would say yeah that, that could work on pretty much any educational video most likely all right now what about Another thing that is new in DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, one of the things that I saw here is that also a couple of creators have already made their own videos on like what's new on DaVinci Resolve like months back when the first betas were released. So I'm going to try to not cover those things because those you've probably heard about already. And I'm going to try to link a video on those from creators that cover those more in depth. For example, this thing right here, the color slice. Now, my resolution right now is set to 150%, so that's why it looks so big. If you work at 100%, this would be a little bit more towards the middle, and you'll have this bar right here on the left, right? But this one is really cool because I think it divides all the colors to their own individual channel. That way, they are more easily to adjust um, when you're working in the color page. Now, I haven't used this much at all because I just opened this today. But I'm going to link a video from a creator that I think has done a pretty good job explaining how these work. Check the video for that in the description. Another cool thing here is the, they said that they added film emulation or not film emulation, but halation controls to the film look creator. So if you're in studio, you have the option to work with these, right? And these allows you to create some pretty interesting things. Uh, I think I'll, I use this on the edit page. Yeah, so on the color page, sorry. On the color page, you can use this effect or also on the edit page by going to the open effects section right here. And I think Jamie made a video covering how to use this effect in itself. So I'm going to link that video right here because I haven't really used this effect at all to create anything because I don't really need it for anything. But if I wanted to make something sort of like cinematic, nostalgic type of vibe then you can use this pretty cool tool that's available for the studio users so i'm gonna link a video for that in the description as well now oh i should pause okay pause I still move anyways i just wanted to make a quick interruption for this video and mention the paperful effects so if you want to make paperful animations or add them to your videos make sure to check out paperfulleffects.com which is the tool that i built 
so that you can try out the tool and find out more about it. If there's 100 people that comment on this video, I'm going to give away one copy or one license for it to somebody that has commented. Now, I think it's unlikely that 100 people will comment because that's not usually how what happens with these videos. But if you want it, if you really want it, then leave a comment and maybe also tell your friends to leave a comment because there's not that many people that leave comments. But yeah. All right. Let me unpause this. Okay, let's continue with the video. Now, this is a pretty interesting function. One thing that they did say was that they added the function to add the transition to all the edit actions in the cut timeline it uses the last use transition. I wasn't able to figure out how to make that work. I don't really use the cut page right here as much. I was, I was thinking that maybe if you were to do these, then it adds to everything, right? Or if you press like, Control T with all of these selected, then the last one adds. But when I press Control T to add the transition automatically to all of them, it's always just the one that's set up as the as the standard transition, right? So that means that if I were to select this one as the standard, now I press, I select all of these and press Control T. Now we have the diamond as the transition that's pasted on the, all the clips by default. I'm not sure how that works. I don't really use a cut pitch that much, but that's something that might be worth looking into. Uh, it wasn't really that clear for me what exactly they meant for that. But one thing they did add was the ability for you to, let's say you have a clip in between two and you want to get rid of that. In the past, if you were to get rid of it, well, still, if you move these up, it just goes away. If you deleted these in the past or in previous versions, if you deleted these, these previous transition or the coming or the intro transition would also be deleted. Now on this version, these always stays. So if you were to put these right here and copy this one, let's do that. Now this one will stay if we delete this one. So that's a pretty cool and useful function so that you don't have to continuously drag and drop a transition again. Or if you wanted to delete a clip, I had to go like that and then delete it and then bring that transition back. It was just a pretty useful function, I would say. Now, another effect that I found was this flying flag effect, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Um, it would probably work better as like an addition to something else or maybe for compositing some stuff. Uh, it's a pretty simple like fusion effect, right? They build it like this. If you want to know how to build this, then you can open it in fusion and then check it out how this whole thing was built. Pretty cool. And yeah, it looks great and you have a bunch of modifications that you can adjust in this case right here. Now, for the use cases of it, I'm not sure. There might be a way to create some interesting transitions with these maybe. But we'll have to check it out and play around a little bit more and experiment with it to see and make it actually work in an interesting and usable way, right? One thing that I thought that would add already was like, and this is maybe a request that I should make. If you add a marker right here on this clip, for example, I wanted these to carry over to the Fusion page like that. It would have been great if there was a way to do that. Or maybe there is a way and I just don't have it activated. If there is, then let me know down in the comments so that I can have that activated because it's definitely something that would be extremely useful for anybody that's mixing actual videos with motion graphics and trying to work both things together, right? So that's one of the things that maybe I should feature or send them a request for, or maybe it's just too complicated to add. So we'll have to deal with that. Let me actually check if I do that on an adjustment layer, if that actually works. Where is it? Uh, Open Infusion. No, it doesn't actually move on the adjustment layer at all. So yeah, if you do, if there is a way and you know about it, let me know because that would be really useful to know. Now, another new thing that they've added on the 19 version is the S text, which is basically a text node, but that uses the, I guess, technology of the shapes, which means that if you write something, you can make these really big and it won't really lose that much, won't really lose quality because it's sort of vectorized. Now, that being said, I thought they would add a way for you to, you know how in, in After Effects, you are able to select or turn a text into basically borders or polygons and then adjust the in and out points. 
I thought that would be a thing already, but I guess it's not yet. We still just have these normal composite um, thickness values that we can change right here. And I haven't been able to find another way to do that yet. So we still have to do the masking around these if we want to do that. Or maybe there is somebody that has created a plugin to make this work. Actually, I think maybe because X session has an SVG converter. So like you convert your SVG files into S polygon shapes, maybe using the S text, mixing that with his tool can work. I'm going to tell him to try it out and make a video about it if it does work that way. That way we can have that um, sort of like write on text animation a lot more or a lot faster than we would have otherwise, right? And yeah, so that is one thing that I wanted them to add on the S text at least. I haven't had the chance to try much. You can obviously extrude these since this is um, an S shape. You can always extrude the text. So you have the option, the option or the ability to create some interesting things with that as well. Yeah, those are the main things that I found on these latest update or the notes. If you want to read the actual notes of the update, I'm going to link that in the description as well. There's a lot of like, um, not like actual effects or generators that were created, but a lot of just like functions for like audio stuff or, or for the actual black magic uh, equipment. And there's a bunch of fixes for like fusion and some often effects performance stuff. So I'm going to link that in the description as well if you want to know what those are about. But in the meantime, those are the ones that I found interesting and worth knowing and making a quick video about. So yeah, that is it for this video. If I miss, if I, if there is something I should know, let me know down in the comments.